Step right up, step right up. Happy Learning Day, Grade 8 English learners, and welcome to DepEd TV. I'm your teacher, Frenny, Teacher Rami. Get ready and enjoy learning English for Grade 8 right in the comfort of your home. So come on, get your pen, paper, and your self-learning module, and let's start to learn and to love English. In our previous episode, we discussed modal verbs or modals used in expressing opinions and emotions. As what we have discussed, modals are verbs that express a suggestion or recommendation which is an effective way to convince or persuade. It is used to formally give a piece of advice or recommendation usually coming from an expert. To refresh your memory of the modals and their functions, let us play the Wheel of Modals game. I'm going to spin the wheel where the function of the modal is indicated, and you will rearrange the letters to form the modal that it refers to. You are given 3 seconds to answer. Ready? Let's spin the wheel. Number 1. It is used to give a recommendation by presenting the possible negative consequence if the advice is not followed. The answer is, had better. Number 2. This modal is also used to give a suggestion but more insistent than the modal could. The answer is should. Number three. It is used to show a strong obligation that needs to be followed. The correct answer is must. Number 4. This modal is used to give a suggestion which a person may or may not follow. The correct answer is could. Number 5. It is used to formally give a piece of advice or a recommendation usually coming from an expert. The correct answer is, ought to. This time, let us try to use the appropriate modals in the following sentences. Number 1. Young people blank share their problems with their parents. Number 2. There blank be a reason for his absence. Number three. You blank seek advice from a guidance counselor if you are anxious. Number four. Children blank eat more vegetables and fruits if they don't want to get sick. Number 5. We blank be thankful for the blessing of waking up healthy each day. Let's check your answers. Number 1. Young people could share their problems with their parents. Number 2. There ought to be a reason for his absence. Number 3. You should seek advice from a guidance counselor if you are anxious. Number four, children had better eat more vegetables and fruits if they don't want to get sick. Number five, we must be thankful for the blessing of waking up healthy each day. 
I am sure you had fun with our Wheel of Models game at the same time it helped you remember the lesson we discussed last time. And today, I'm sure that you are excited for our new lesson. Oops, I think I need to update my Facebook status. What's on your mind? How are you feeling today? I feel grateful today. How about you? Do you usually update your status and indicate how you are feeling on a daily basis? In today's lesson, you will do another self-check on how you react and respond to different situations through an activity. Read each statement and indicate how you feel about them by choosing the appropriate emoticon. Number 1. People waste their time on social media instead of spending time with their family and friends. Number 2. Parents take time to bond with their children. Number 3. Our family is safe and healthy amidst the COVID-19 outbreak. Number 4. We can surpass the challenges brought about by the virus. Number 5. I study really hard because of my family. How do you feel about sentence number 1? What emoji or emoticon did you choose? Isn't it sad? It's sad that people waste their time on social media instead of spending time with their family and friends. How do you feel about sentence number two? What emoji or emoticon did you choose? Isn't it happy? The whole family feels happy if parents take time to bond with their children. How do you feel about sentence number three? What emoji or emoticon did you choose? Isn't it thankful? We are thankful that our family is safe and healthy amidst the COVID-19 outbreak. How do you feel about sentence number four? What emoji or emoticon did you choose? Isn't it hopeful? We are hopeful that we can surpass the challenges brought about by the virus. How do you feel about sentence number five? What emoji or emoticon did you choose? Isn't it inspired? You are inspired to study really hard because of your family. Aside from verbs, there are also other words that can be used to express emotions and opinions. Let's go back to the new sentences that were formed based on the answers. Notice the underlined words in the sentences. Do you know what part of speech these underlined words are? Take note that the underlined words in the sentences express emotions. They are called adjectives. You will learn more about them in this lesson. As we all know, an adjective modifies a noun or a pronoun by describing, identifying, or quantifying words. An adjective usually precedes the noun or the pronoun which it modifies. This time, you will learn a set of adjectives that will help express your emotions on a certain issue. Emotions can't be easily seen. We can guess that someone is either sad or happy, but emotions aren't always expressed. Rather, it's something we sense. For today, we will focus on adjectives that show positive emotions. Positive adjectives 
of some adjectives showing positive emotions. Take a look at how these adjectives are used in the sentences to convey positive emotions. As your friend, I will be supportive if you will share your problems with me. In this sentence, the word supportive describes the positive emotion of the person about being able to listen to his or her friend's problems. Second sentence, I always aim to be a better version of myself. In this sentence, the word better describes the positive emotion of the person about being able to develop oneself to become the best that he can be. Next sentence, we are thankful for the chance to rest. In this sentence, the word thankful describes the positive emotion about having an opportunity to be able to rest. This time, let us examine closely this paragraph. As Filipinos, we love to be with our family during dinner time to share our best or worst experiences of the day. However, this practice has been gradually disappearing because of technology. Young people would rather use social media to express themselves for they are embarrassed to share their feelings with their parents. On the other hand, parents are somehow guilty of contributing to the distance felt by their children for some of them are too busy with work such as taking office calls at mealtime, checking emails, or surfing the internet. Because of these, there is less time for family bonding. This must change. We must not let technology affect the time we spend with them. Doing this will create better and stronger relationships. Can you pick out the adjectives in the paragraph that express positive emotional response? In the first sentence, the adjective best is used to describe the positive circumstances that a person could experience in a day. In the last sentence, the words better and stronger are used to motivate the reader to create a bond with their parents rather than spending time with technology. Have you realized the importance of using adjectives in expressing positive emotions? Positive emotional response adjectives describe a person's good emotions. For tomorrow, we will discuss the adjectives that express negative emotional responses. That's it for today's episode. Make sure to always stay tuned to DepEd TV and have a journey with me in Grade 8 English where you will have fun and interesting learning experiences that will not just feed your mind but will also nurture your love for English. Again, this is Teacher Rami, your friendly saying, Don't fret! Because learning English is not a threat, 
Instead, it is our gateway to understanding and learning more about the world.